is December 21st, 1985. It's hot this time of year in tropical Queensland. It's 11 p.m. and the air is still thick and oppressive. On a lonely dirt road just outside of town, friends gather at the Turner's Butterfly Farm for an early Christmas barbecue. Just after 11.30 p.m., four partygoers break free from the rest of the group to explore the property grounds. They make their way down a boardwalk that cuts through the thick Daintree jungle, where they find a private dock at the edge of Barrett Creek, a small offshoot of the Daintree River. The four sit on the dock, enjoying the night air as they're serenaded by the rainforest all around them. Above them hangs a single light from a lamppost, it cast eerie shadows across the creek. At some point, one of the friends encourages the group to hop into the creek to cool off. Everybody in this group is well aware of what could potentially lurk beneath the surface of these brackish waters. Not too far away is the mouth of the river which opens to the Coral Sea. As the waters rise and fall with the tide level, bull sharks will swim up the river and into its tributaries in search of food. And what's more is Northeast Australia's croc country. They're plentiful all over the Cape York Peninsula, and the Daintree is no exception. But right now on Barrett Creek, the tide is low. The level is no more than a couple of feet deep. And the water surface is still, like a dark sheet of glass. The first of the four friends to enter the water is Maurice Mealing. He does a quick lap around the end of the jetty and quickly exits the water. He can't shake an uneasy feeling. He tells the rest of the group not to enter the water, but the warning falls on deaf ears. With the water being so calm and the level being so low, everyone is lured into this false sense of security. They believe they'd easily be able to spot any potential threats and that sets their minds at ease. The next of the friends to enter the water is John Robb. He's followed by 43-year-old Beryl Ruck. The two ease their way into the still blackness of the creek, hugging closely to the dock. They remain there chatting with one another for a while while Maurice and his wife Serena look on from the safety of the jetty. Unbeknownst to the group, they're being watched. In the shadows, just outside the soft glow from the overhead lamp, lies a massive prehistoric stalker. It's invisible in the dark water, concealed just below the surface. Its movements silent and methodical, and its sights are set on the bathers. It submerges as it begins to close the distance. Slowly, patiently. John and Beryl are being hunted. Suddenly the rainforest goes dead silent. John now experiences the same uneasy feeling as Maurice before. As he turns to climb back onto the dock, it's as if a depth charge explodes all around. He's forced backwards by the turbulence from the water displacing in front of him. In the confusion and the chaos, John doesn't understand what's just happened. But the witnesses on the dock had all too clear a view. They see the massive body and tail of a crocodile they estimate to be 17 to 18 feet in length. Then they see Beryl Ruck with a look of terror on her face. She throws her arms in the air, and without so much as a scream, disappears beneath the water's surface. The attack is over in the blink of an eye, and Beryl Ruck is never seen again.